What is up everybody? This is Lyle, no hippie trucking and transportation. Got me a load coming home to Denver. Picked it up last night about mm, midnight or so in Hiram, Utah. Just got to the Denver yard, about 25 miles away from home. And I'm not going home till tomorrow. You know, every other time you pick up a refrigerated load, that shit be dropping like, you know, one in the morning, three in the morning. This doesn't deliver till tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and thug it out here at the yard. Still wearing the same shirt I had on. What was that, two days ago? Because listen, when I'm like on my way home, I ain't gonna take a shower until I get to my own shower. You know what I'm saying? So we're just thugging it. But uh, you might be asking, Lyle, why ain't you gonna go home? Listen, when I go home, I'm going home. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I'm not trying to get into any foolishness in the middle of a load or anything like that. Because when I go home, listen, it's gonna be cervezas, whiskey, all that good stuff. So rather than even put myself in the temptation and all that stuff and go home and chill out and then have to bring my ass right back out tomorrow, I figure, you know what? Let me just see if I can catch up on a little sleep now and then uh, deliver this load tomorrow, get a washout, and then uh, head home for some real home time. Because I'm not about that, you know, half-ass shit where, you know, I go home and the whole time I'm home I'm thinking about this load. No. Anyway. Been reading through the comments and everything like that. Haven't had a chance to get into any of those or reply to any of those comments. Because I'm just trying to get home, you know what I'm saying? I feel like uh, I'm the Warriors trying to make it to home base you know what I'm saying all you old school people you know what I'm talking about right there or if you happen to be kind of well I'm not even gonna use that reference but uh, man I'm telling you this has been a long two months out dropped off my student at the Salt Lake City Yard what yesterday he's about ready to upgrade Hopefully he gets the truck he's wanting, man. Because when I was up there, I saw more lightweights than a high school kegger. So uh, we'll see what he gets. Told him a way he might be able to skirt that if he plays it right. If they try to put him in one. But uh, we will see. Planning on probably going live. You know, I call that the, uh, the ruckus when I go live at home. Get through some of these comments and uh, chill out. Now one thing I do when I'm coming home that a lot of people won't do, I fill up my truck at least three quarters full. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that my truck payment and all that, not that it matters, because you know, my uh, emergency fund is banging, but uh, I know my truck payment is gonna be made for this week I'm out, but then I'm going to be out like two more weeks, so when I come out, I'm not going to want fuel to be part of that equation for uh, a little bit. So I like to, you know, load up a little bit, fill up on def, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's that. If you are coming to Colorado, they have, listen, do not be playing with this chain law in Colorado. They had the chain law signs up on I-25, which isn't even like a huge, like, uh, chain law corridor and they were like chain laws required September 1st to May 15th or whatever it was if you're rolling through here Colorado does not play get yourself some chains throw them on if you're like me get you some auto socks I do keep one set of chains on my truck to go along with my auto socks just because there are those I don't plan on running I-70 in the winter but if you do happen to run I-70 in the winter they will throw the chain lock up about two miles, a mile and a half before you actually get to the snow. 
And if you're running auto socks like I run, it can have a tendency to kind of chew them up. But uh, you know, like I said, I don't plan on running I-70, so it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal, but I do carry one set of chains, two sets of auto socks on my truck. Uh, another thing, listen, you new guys to watch my channel, get yourself some anti-gel. I was just at the Salt Lake City Terminal and the guy in uh, Outbound didn't even know what anti-gel was. So I must be one of the first people stocking up on anti-gel. I got eight bottles, I have three at home. This is anti-gel right here. Throw this shit liberally in your truck when it gets uh, cold outside, I really start running it at uh, around 20 degrees. That might be a little bit conservative, but last thing I want is to be having my fuel filter all clogged up or anything like that. So this bottle here treats 250 gallons. What I'll do, I'll put just under half in the truck or on one in one uh, fuel tank, just under half in the other fuel tank and the rest in the reefer. You do not want to be dropping a reefer at minus 28 degrees in South Dakota or something like that and have that reefer freeze up on you. So boom, get you some of that. I also have a video. I can't link it because I'm just uh, thugging it right now, but I have my uh, winter supply kit video. Check that out. Pretty, all you, pretty much probably all you have to do is check, type in like no hippie trucking, winter, like equipment or I don't know something like that anyway I think this is like five six dollars at the terminal if you really want to get gangster with, well I'm not even gonna say that because I'm not gonna promote it but you could be like Nino Brown with this set you up the Carter out at uh, a truck stop make you a little bit of money but that's not why I'm doing it anyway for those of you guys out there that are getting affected by the navigation situation out there listen i feel you i'm going through it too you're gonna have all these people talking about you know what about an atlas and all this kind of stuff you know what, what about a horse and buggy you know what i'm saying i'm 52 years old and i'm not even gonna mess around with the atlas so i do have two gps systems i bought the nava no the uh ram mcnally the tnd 80 that's supposed to be the real nice one that's the tablet and you have all this stuff that GPS was trying to do too much this little diesel small one right here this bad boy does the trick so I got that I'm running that and uh, kind of rambling right now but uh, that's about it just left uh, the Salt Lake City terminal now listen The one thing about the Salt Lake City Terminal, you know, I could do without the cafeteria being open and all that kind of stuff. The company store not being open, I was wanting to get some stuff out of there. That was a kind of an inconvenience right there. Uh, so I'm gonna probably end up paying a little bit more to get what I need at a TA, but uh, for those of you rookies just coming in, great deals at the uh, company store whether it's clothing you know uh, truck accessories stuff like that very good deals a lot less than you'd be able to get maybe not less than you'd be able to get on Amazon but a lot less that than you'd be able to get at some of the more convenient locations uh, what else is on my mind right now oh let's talk about something that irritated the shit out of me yesterday so got this trailer best trailer I've had in two months even my trainee said it two two zero something or another man we ran the shit out of those tires on that bad boy anyway I think we had that for I don't know we had it for a while but uh drop off at uh Salt Lake City Terminal. well we don't drop off we come through the Salt Lake City Terminal for me to drop him off and for me to get my wash out and leave on my next load. They tell me, drop the trailer. There's like a, a problem with the interior. I was like, what? So they're like, well, it looks like the receiver like 
you know, there's this, this metal strip that goes around the, the, the door that holds that plastic on. There's about that much of it that was, uh, it looked like maybe a pallet jack or something. It caught it and kind of broke it. Man, if they're going to pull that off the road for that shit, man, they need to pull every single trailer off the road. If they're pulling that off the road, that kind of pissed me off. Luckily, it was a dropping hook, so, you know, I was going to have to give it up anyway. But if that was going to be a live load, uh, it would have been hard giving up that trailer. So, uh Anyway, that, I think that's really about it. I'm just really wanting to get home, chill out. Told my son to go out and buy me something special. So we'll see what he comes with on that. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be out. It's not going to be as long as I usually might want to be out. Because I might, I might try something a little bit different. But I do want to get out to Springfield. I don't trust the Denver I want to get out to Springfield, do this overhead thing or whatever, whatever it is that uh, they suggest on Peterbilt's at 150,000 miles. I'll probably do that in Springfield. But one thing I do do, and people are going to be like, wow, you're wasting money. You know what? I waste money on shit that matters. Get my truck in the shop, oil change. I do oil chains about 35, 40,000 miles, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more this time because I was out on chaining. Chassis lube filters i have them listen i could do the blade the the windshield wiper blades myself but for a couple of dollars they're gonna do that i'm gonna have them replace my hid headlights nothing wrong with them but i want to make sure they don't go out on me when i don't want them to go out on me so boom and those things are like 80 dollars a piece so listen i spend money on shit that matters i'm not getting no you know i'm not getting no washes you know i'm not washing my truck every you know you know every you know other week or anything like that listen that little tan that little tan film you see on the outside of my truck that's the money kind of accumulating on the outside of it and all them bugs you see those are dead soldiers so you know don't want to disrespect them oh shoot anyway that's about it i'm gonna well i was almost tempted to go home but my wife said, you know, she's having a girl's night, and that kind of solidified it. Made it prob made me probably make a better decision anyway, because last thing I want to do is be relaxing at home and be like having to come back out here. You know, the Denver terminal is about five miles away from where I'm dropping off. So uh, let's just thug it out. So what I'm gonna try this time, I might stay home 11 days, maybe 12 go out for about let's say a month strong out but then stop at the Salt Lake City Terminal not Salt Lake, Springfield Terminal get a few things done on my truck maybe run a couple more weeks and then depending on how the weather's doing, I might stay out a little bit longer, I might come home for maybe a couple days you know what, let's just put it this way I'm going to play this next one out I'm going to play it by ear because the winter kind of throws a monkey wrench in my thing. Because like I'm saying, if la if this winter's like last winter, I'm not playing around with it. You know what I'm saying? Not that I can't drive in the winter and all that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about, I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of people calling me, you know, idiot on this. I'm going to have to do a video on why I like using my Jakes in the winter. Not for normal braking or anything like that, but on... Uh, hill descents and things like that and when I talk about it you're gonna say you know what the physics actually make that sound like a good thing to do I know I've been told not to but we're gonna get into the physics of it and uh, kind of go from there anyway I've rambled on long enough I'd like to thank you guys for stopping my no hippie trucking and transportation I appreciate it comment subscribe and I'm out